Timetable Part 1 For part one of the timetable section, we will be focusing on setting up the timetable defaults. We will return to the timetable in a later tutorial to flesh it out. For scenarios, we do not need to worry about the following settings. Version number, timetable name, timetable description, available in service mode, and is looping. For timetable target platforms, you will choose which platforms this timetable will be available on. To note, PC is not just for the PC, but also for the current generation consoles. You can set up a timetable to be available for just these, or also include the previous generation consoles. For the sake of this tutorial, and given our work will only be able to be shared on PC at the moment, we will just select PC. If you are creating scenarios as part of a third party group to release commercially, you would select all three unless you needed a separate previous gen timetable to prevent crashing on the older consoles. So we go to timetable platforms, click the drop down and select PC. Now for the root. In the root drop down, you will select the root time the, the timetable is for. For our tutorial, this is the West Somerset definition. So we go here, we type search. I type in West and West Somerset de definition comes up, which is the root definition we want. We leave the Pathfinder flags alone and we leave the service start time override mode alone as we don't need to use those. Now, the front end starting time defaults to 6.30. I've set it to 7.30 a.m. because I want our scenario to start at 7.30 a.m. You can change that to whatever you want. Simulation start time is where the time you want the simulation to start is. Please note that during daylight savings time, this will read plus one hour on the end. To this end, if our front end starting time is 6.30 a.m., we would set the time here to 7.30 a.m. During winter time, this reverts back to zero, meaning we do not have to adjust our start time here to one hour later. This setting is based on your system clock as DST varies around the world. Now I want to set this to 2023. So in the 2017, we change that to 2023. I want it to be in the seventh month on the 23rd day. And the start time I will set to 8.30, like so. So there we have front end starting time of 7.30, but a simulation start time of 8.30 because it's currently plus one hour as we are still in daylight savings time here in the UK. The simulation time limit is for how many hours and minutes we wish the timetable to be simulated when running a simulation. This defaults to 36 hours. If our scenario is, for example, 90 minutes long, we would set this to 1 hour and 30 minutes. I usually like to add an hour on the time here just in case anything goes wrong with the timetable. So what I'm going to do for the moment, we may change this depending on how long the tutorial scenario lasts. I'm going to set it to 0, 01 30 00. 0. We tick the box for use Train Sim World 4 scoring so that when a player completes our scenario, they have the potential to get a platinum medal. Leave the root data score override alone, and we can ignore available tutorials. For timetable actor, you want to click on the drop down list and select root timetable, not sandbox timetable. The dispatcher should be set to AI version 3, which is the only one available. The yard manager should also be set to AI version two, the latest version. And the timetable version should be set to version seven, which is currently the latest version. We can now compile and save our timetable and look towards working with the definition file in the next tutorial. It is very important that you remember to compile your timetable before saving. So we click on compile timetable and it gives us a little message down the bottom saying everything was fine. And then we click the save button.